Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question uh, comes from John, KC1MBH. He wants to very thoroughly ground his station, and I commend him for that. However, he is looking at some things that uh, do not need to be grounded. He says he has a G5RV inverted V antenna supported at the center by an MFJ telescopic fiberglass, that's important, mast. It's up about 45 feet. That's tall. Uh, I assume you have that guide somehow because uh, you have to uh, keep that thing from coming over. 45 feet's pretty high in the air. And I will assure you that 45 feet is a lot further down than it is up. Um, Aiden and I put uh, together a mast based on some recommendations by Stephen Klein uh, that is 30 feet tall, and boy, that was uh, hard in and of itself. Fortunately, the fiberglass mast is not very heavy, whereas the other mast was. I have an 8-foot ground rod at the base of the antenna with an Alpha Delta surge protector for the antenna coax. Very good. You're going to need another one where the coax enters the house. Because if you've got lightning outside, it will come along the ground. Okay, so you need a ground rod right outside where that enters the house and a, a lightning arrestor there. That will keep lightning out of the house. Okay, and you want it out of the house. Okay, the Alpha Delta Surge protectors, which are these little things right here uh, are very effective for that sort of thing. The fiberglass mast is supported by eight Dacron polyester guy ropes. Um, I assume these are the kind that uh, don't have a problem with ultraviolet light or UV. Four of the Dacron guy supports are attached to my home and garage about six feet above grade. The other four are attached to wooden posts out in the way back. He must have a big uh, yard. My question is, should the base of the fiberglass mass also be conducted, uh, connected to the ground, and do the Dacron guy supports need to be grounded at the connection to the house? The answer to both those questions is no, for the very simple reason that fiberglass and the uh, Dacron uh, guy ropes are not conductors, they're insulators. Okay, so they're not going to be conducting lightning. What will be conducting any lightning surge will be your coaxial cable. Now, the purpose of the lightning arrestor, like these little things right here, is to keep the lightning out of the house. We don't care what happens to your antenna. We don't care what happens to the coax above that last lightning arrestor. They are sacrificial lambs. Far better to have an antenna vaporize than have your house catch on fire. Now, I have suffered a direct lightning strike to my house many years ago uh, when I lived in Louisville, Colorado. In fact, that's before Loretta and I even met. I had a 20-meter dipole up on the roof, and it was connected with RG8X uh, down to my station. Now, uh, it was hit by lightning, and what was very interesting about it, it completely vaporized the antenna. There was no part of the antenna found. I found the insulators, I found the center conductor. The uh, coax blew out about a wavelength below uh, where the antenna was, so there was some resonance there. And it caused a little bit of damage uh, to the power supply blew the main chip in my Astron analog power supply, RS-35, and uh, it uh, arced over one of the plates in the antenna tuner. It was fairly easy to break the arc uh, in the antenna tuner. I replaced the chip in the power supply for a dollar, and my radio was completely disconnected from everything, including ground, and set aside in the case that there was any lightning. You might find this uh, best practice for you too. 
in the lightning season, only connect your radio when you're going to operate and then disconnect it. Uh, in the rest of the year, you can go ahead and rely on those uh, lightning surge protectors. Okay, so uh, he says he enjoys my stuff both in QST and on YouTube. This is John Casey, one MBH, and you're asking a lot of good questions. Now, I would refer you to Ask Dave number eight, uh, one of my very first Ask Dave videos where I cover the basics of grounding your station, including bonding your ground rod right outside your, the entry into the house uh, to your utility ground. Now, the key is to keep the lightning out of the house. That's why that length of coax that's on the ground or an inch or two under the ground uh, is a good lightning antenna. So you want another lightning arrestor just before it goes into the house. Never put the lightning arrestors in the house because you're inviting lightning into your house and you don't want to do that. Lightning has a mind of its own. You may put conductors out. The lightning may or may not follow them. It has a mind of its own. So there you have it. If you have enjoyed this video, I would ask you please to subscribe and to click the bell, which allows you to get um, notification of new videos. Also, be sure to listen in on the Thursday evening um, live stream, which starts at 6.30, I'm sorry, 6.45 p.m. on Thursday evening's U.S. Mountain Time, okay? And uh, the purpose of these chats is just to chat, enjoy each other, uh, share experiences, and also to ask questions. If somebody has a question, I will endeavor to answer it. I may have to do some real-time lookups, uh, but we'll endeavor to answer it. So there you have it. Take a look on the next page at different ways that you can um, help this channel financially. And until we next meet, 73.